If you took the graph of the 10 to the x, which is an exponential graph, and it would have an asymptote at y equals 0, and you switch the x and the y values, what would happen to 0, 1? It would change to 1, 0. What would happen to 1, 10? It would change to 10, 1. And so just like mathematicians invented or decided on the square root sign to be the inverse of squaring, which when you learned that, it was like it was weird. I think that's your first like weird symbol thing you learned in math. Did you learn any weird symbol before square roots? Hmm? Long division is kind of, but that's, that's not a, that was just like a, a process thing doesn't actually mean a number. So even weirder, in my opinion, than the square root sign is introducing log. So the opposite of an exponential function of 10 to the x would be y equals log base 10 of x. And this is called the common logarithm, so common that you decide, I don't want to write the 10. That takes too much time. And if you write nothing, it's like there is an invisible 10 right there. Do you see the 10? No, it's invisible. But it's there. Maybe it's home. I know what I see. Here we go. We're going to make it lovely hard. And then we're going to rewrite the invisible 10. Only visible. <gasps> only visible in the lines. Oh my goodness. No, I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> so if you don't write anything with the log, it has a base of 10. If you want to use any other base, you would need to have that base written. This is called the common logarithm. And so what we're going to find is that if you had points on your exponential graph, like 0, 1, 1, 10, and 2, and 100, then you have to switch x and y, and you would have those points on your log graph. So this means that log 10 of 100 is equal to 2. Which leads us to the definition of a logarithm. And I'll get you to write this underneath the definition of the logarithm. That anything that has an exponential form, you can write it in its logarithmic form. And anything in logarithmic form, you can write in its exponential form. You can switch back and forth. And they really help you understand them because I think you have no problem if I ask you this question. What's that equal to? It's equal to 8. Good. You, you guys are pretty good at exponents and knowing what they mean. You know that they're repeated multiplication. But if I gave you a question like this, what is log 3 of 27? The answer is 3. And the reason the answer is 3 is because if you have something in log form, the little 3 here is the same as the base of an exponent. So I could be like, OK, I know my base and my exponent. The answer of a logarithm is always the exponent. So this is what I don't know. Because the answer to the exponent here, what I don't know, is the exponent in exponential form. And the argument, or what's inside the logarithm, is the answer. So now when I see it this way, 
your brain is able to do that computation probably a lot quicker. Three to what exponent is 27? The answer would be three. So sometimes what I like to do with logarithms to visualize it is I just imagine a tiny little question mark right there. So when I see a logarithm, it's like, oh, this logarithm is really asking three to what exponent is 27? And I find that visual really helpful for understanding it. So does it make sense here, if I put a little tiny question mark right there, 10 to what exponent is 100? Does it make sense that that's equal to 2? A little bit easier that way. Now one of the things we have to get really good at is flip-flopping between having logarithmic form and exponential form. And that's what we're going to do in example 1. So in example one, they've written in A everything in exponential form, and they're saying, can you rewrite this just in log form? So the base stays the same. The base is three. I always think that logs solve for exponents, so that's what your answer is. Your answer in the log form is always the exponent in exponential form. And that means the 27 has to be inside your logarithm. So for the second one, the base is 5. It's going to solve for the exponent, so the answer is going to be negative 2. And inside your logarithm would be 1 over 25. So log base 5 of 1 25th is equal to negative 2. And if anything to the 0 is equal to 1, then log base of anything of 1 is always going to equal 0. So log 7 of 1, 0. Log 10 of 1, 0. And in part B, they're doing the opposite. They have the log form. The base is 7. So the base of the log is the same as the base of your exponent. Log solve for exponents. So you know that the 2 is your exponent. Is 7 squared 49? Does that make sense? Yeah. Then log base 7 of 49 equals 2. And if I imagine that little tiny question mark right there, it seems to make sense that that answer is 2. So the second one, the base is 4. Exponent is negative 3. So 4 to the negative 3 is 160. Finally, base of 10, the exponent is negative 4. It'll equal 110,000. So questions for practice on this one? 5, 6, and 